Hello. So in this video, we'll talk about the selectivity of radical halogenation. In the previous video, uh, we used an example of radical chlorination uh, and helped figure out, help you figure out what the different kinds of products that can form from a particular hydrocarbon are. In this video, we're going to build up to figuring out which of those uh, is the major product and what the product distribution might look like. Uh, we're going to start off with a really simple case, however, of propane. In the radical chlorination of propane, there are two possible products, one chloropropane and two chloropropane. Uh, because propane is symmetric, uh, putting a chlorine on one end of the chain is the same as putting a chlorine on the other end of the chain. And there are six different hydrogens that can be removed uh, in, in either of the methyl group to swap out a chlorine. And then there are two hydrogens that can be removed in the middle. And if you're just basing your product distribution on the number of hydrogens, you might expect that one chloropropane ends up being the major product. And you would be wrong. Uh, it turns out that the product distribution is actually about 40% uh, one chloropropane and 60% two chloropropane. But if you think about what's going on in the reaction, uh, the reaction leading to one chloropropane goes through a primary radical. The reaction leading to two chloropropane goes through a secondary radical. And we know that secondary radicals are more stable. So here is a reaction coordinate energy diagram for this process, or for the first step of this reaction, the, ra the formation of the, the alkyl radical. Uh, both variations start in the same place with chlorine and propane. Uh, but the primary radical is a little bit less stable than the secondary radical. And if you were to carefully measure the rate of this reaction, you would find out that the secondary radical also forms faster than the primary radical. And so because it forms faster, more of it's going to happen. And part of the reason it forms faster is because it's slightly more stable. Now, you might remember from general chemistry that there's not a strong correlation between kinetics and, and thermodynamics. Uh, the more spontaneous a reaction is, does not automatically mean that it's faster. But there is something called the Hammond postulate that suggests that for very, very similar things, the more exothermic one might be the faster one. And we're going to talk about the Hammond postulate as it relates to this reaction in, in a few slides. I'm now going to look at the bromination of propane. And using what we just talked about, you might suspect that the more substituted, the secondary product, the 2-bromopropane, is going to form preferentially over the 1-bromopropane. And you would be right, but the product distribution is very different. You only get about 4% of 1-bromopropane and 96% of 2-bromopropane. The answer to that also lies in the energy diagram. So while the the energy difference between the two radicals is similar, or, or the same actually, they're the same radicals as, as they are in the chlorine case. Um, the difference in their activation energies is larger for bromine. Uh, the reaction with bromine is endothermic in its first step. And uh, endothermic reactions, you know, all if everything else is really, 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 really similar, tend to be a little bit slower. And the difference in activation energy or the difference in rate of formation between primary and secondary is larger for bromine than it is for chlorine. And so you get you get more selectivity. Uh, the reaction is endothermic, so bromine is less reactive. Uh, and a couple of slides, I'm going to reinforce the idea that less reactive equals more selective. Uh, I just really wanted to briefly bring up this idea, the Hammond postulate. Uh, closer in energy, closer in structure. Uh, so I'm going to put up here the energy diagram for radical chlorination's first step. And the and show you this arrow, which shows you that the transition state, which is the top of the hump, is closer in energy to the reactants. Now, the nation, nature of transition states, they are they have infinitesimal lifetimes. We can't observe them, but we can hypothesize what they might look like. And so in this case, uh, we can make the guess that the transition state is going to look more like the reactants because they're closer in energy. And so for chlorination, what that means is that at the transition state, at the highest energies uh, in the coordinate diagram, the carbon-hydrogen bond has barely begun to break. 
and the chlorine hydrogen bond has barely begun to form. And so the developing radical at the carbon position, really, it's not a whole lot of radical thing going on. So that delta dot means partial radical, just like delta plus is partial positive. And so since that carbon hydrogen bond hasn't broken, there's not actually going to be a lot of difference between the primary and secondary case. And I'll highlight that on the next slide. Here's uh, the similar case for bromine. Remember, the first step is endothermic. And so now the transition state is going to be closer in energy to the products. So it's also uh, closer in structure to the product. And what that might look like is this. Uh, the transition state for bromine is going to look more like the radical product. The carbon-hydrogen bond is going to be almost broken, and the hydrogen-bromine bond is going to be almost formed. And so there's going to be much more like a, a radical on the carbon and so because there's an energy difference between the secondary and primary radicals, there's going to be a similar energy difference between their transition states. Uh, and here's what this might look like for primary, secondary, and tertiary comparing chlorination and bromination. Uh, and you can see pretty quickly from these two graphs that the spacing of energy between the transition states for the three different variations in chlorination is small compared to the spacing for bromination is much larger. Again, because the bromination reaction is endothermic, the bromine is less reactive, it can be more selective. And that's going to be a theme that, that carries throughout uh, organic chemistry. So let's take what we just learned and apply it to the halogenation of 2-methyl-2-propanes. Now we have primary versus tertiary. Um, and I have drawn both possible products for the chlorination and for the bromination of 2-methylpropane. And based on what we just did, you might expect that the tertiary product, 2-chloro-2-methylpropane, which is on the right, would be the major product of this reaction. And you would be wrong. Uh, if you were to do this reaction and determine the product composition, you would find that 64% of the product is actually the less substituted product. Only 36% of the product is the more substituted product. And this ought to surprise you because the tertiary radical is more stable. On the next slide, I'll explain what's going on. Um, for bromine, you would get what you would expect, uh, which is about 1% of the primary product and about 99% of the secondary product. So again, what is going on? So here are those energy diagrams again uh, from a couple of slides ago. And really the issue here is reactivity versus selectivity. Um, and so at the bottom of the slide, I'm going to put up a table of relative selectivities. And I'm including fluorine on here on purpose uh, just to highlight how reactive and how low, so low selectivity fluorine is. So because fluorine is so reactive, it, it's not very selective. And the way that you read this table is for the secondary and tertiary uh, in each row, those positions react that much faster than primary. So for fluorine, the secondary positions react 1.2 times as fast, and the tertiary positions react 1.4 times as fast. For chlorine, secondary re reacts four and a half times faster, and tertiary reacts 5.1 times faster. And so you can see chlorine is more selective than, bro uh, than, than fluorine. And that's why for some reactions, you get the more substituted product preferentially. And then there's bromine. The secondary position reacts 82 times faster, so it's an order of magnitude bigger than, than chlorine. And the tertiary position reacts 1,600 times faster. So because bromine is less reactive, it is much more selective. And fluorine is the most reactive, therefore it's the least selective. We can actually use these relative selectivities to predict the product outcome. I'm going to do that on the next slides. Um, so here is the chlorination of 2-methylpropane again. And now we're going to talk about where, where this product distribution comes from. Uh, so we have nine primary hydrogens that can lead to one chloro, two methylpropane. And they all have a relative selectivity of one, which means there's kind of like nine possible outcomes that uh, can lead to this product. There's only one way that you can form two, uh, the 
tertiary product, but it is five, time, five times more likely because that position is more reactive. So we have basically nine ways you can make primary, one way you can make tertiary, but that way it's five times more likely. And so if you add that up, and you get a total selectivity of 14.1, and nine out of 14.1 is 64%, and 5.1 out of 14.1 is 36%. So even though the tertiary position is more reactive, chlorine can still generate as a major product a less substituted, a less substituted haloalkane if there are lots of CH bonds that you could break to form that product. Uh, because while chlorine is moderately selective, it's not super selective. Let's do the same one for bromine. Uh, so here's the same reaction, but switching chlorine for bromine. Um, same thought process, nine primary hydrogens, one selectivity, nine ways you can get here. But that tertiary hydrogen, even though there's only one of them, is 1600 times more reactive. So that means that is a 1600 times more likely the bromine ends up there than any of the one or than in any of the individual primary hydrogens. So now our divisor is 1609 and nine out of 1609 is around 1% and 1600 out of 1609 is 99%. We can do a similar analysis for more complicated hydrocarbons. And so in a previous video, we looked at all of the monochlorination products of isooctane. Here they all are. And we can do the same kind of analysis for all of these positions. So for the two that are on the top row there, those are two different stereo, those are two enantiomers from the primary positions on the left side of the molecule. Uh, three hydrogens at each spot for a total of three different ways you can make each of those. The next two on the second row are the enantiomers formed from the secondary position. Only one hydrogen leads to each of those, but that hydrogen is four and a half times more reactive. Uh, the third one on the second row is the tertiary product, which only one hydrogen leads to it, but it's 5.1 times more reactive. And then the tert butyl group on the right has nine hydrogens that can lead to that product. And you can add up all of these different probabilities and ways and get that there's a total of 29.1. Uh, and that means 10% of, of the, either of the first two products, 15% of the secondary products, 18% of tertiary products. But the primary product is still going to win 31%. Uh, Doing the same thing for bromine, you can see that you're going to end up with a very big difference again because there's a larger difference in selectivity between primary, secondary, and tertiary. And the tertiary product for bromine wins at 90% of the product mixture. Uh, for this reason, radical bromination is often used in preference over radical chlorination. Uh, especially if you want a more substituted product, you can form it in a higher percentage of the product mixture. Radical chlorination, though, is sometimes used when you need a, a less substituted product because the chlorination will at least pr produce it in a reasonable amount, and then you can take some effort and separate the two. In the next video, we'll talk about some synthetic applications of radical halogenation, and then we'll finish the series with uh, allyl bromination. Thank you for watching.